why the atomic explosive destroyed the life of its own creator Oppenheimer. As Julius Robert Oppenheimer witnessed the successful detonation of the world's first atomic weapon, he was haunted by its implications. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that, one way or another. Oppenheimer was a man of many talents, yet he will forever be remembered as the father of the atomic explosive. The man who gave people the power to destroy themselves was haunted by his own creation. Oppenheimer possessed a natural aptitude for acquiring knowledge. He displayed this ability by learning Dutch in just six weeks to deliver a lecture during his visit to the Netherlands. Born on April 22, 1904, in New York to German Jewish immigrants, he grew up in a wealthy household. His father, Julius, made his fortune as a textile importer, while his mother came from a long-established New York family with a background in art, raised in Manhattan. His home was adorned with prestigious paintings. Initially, Oppenheimer attended a prestigious private school in New York City, with plans to become a chemist upon entering Harvard in 1922. However, his interest shifted toward physics after taking a thermodynamics course, where he also explored philosophy, Greek, and French literature. He dedicated much of his time to studying, expanding his intellectual pursuits. Though delayed a year due to health issues, he managed to graduate from Harvard in three years. Oppenheimer traveled to the University of Cambridge in England to conduct research at the Cavendish Laboratory for Experimental Physics. However, he realized that his true talent lay in theoretical physics rather than experimental work. The stress of his graduate studies led to emotional instability, and he even confessed to attempting to harm his tutor by poisoning an apple with chemicals, though the tutor never ate it. Undeterred, Oppenheimer pursued his studies at the University of Göttingen in Germany, a renowned center for theoretical physics. Despite his youth, he produced significant work and earned his PhD at the age of 23. Returning to the US, he worked as a research fellow at Harvard and later at Caltech. The rising fascism in Europe during the 1930s caught his attention, and he shared Einstein's concern that German scientists might develop an atomic weapon under Adolf's regime. This concern prompted Oppenheimer to lead the Manhattan Project, a highly secretive U.S. Army initiative aimed at developing atomic explosives. He brought together the brightest minds in physics, eventually overseeing a team of more than 3,000 people in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Before his involvement with the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer contributed to the study of atomic fission, the powerful release of energy resulting from splitting an atom. Uranium, particularly U-235, was found to be highly suitable for fission, while plutonium-239 also exhibited promising fission characteristics. The latter had to be manufactured, and reactors were constructed in southeastern Washington state for this purpose. On July 16, 1945, scientists detonated a plutonium explosive over Alamogordo, New Mexico, marking a pivotal moment in history. Humanity had never possessed a weapon that could pose a threat to global civilization before. The successful test of the atomic explosive indicated that it was ready for use by the U.S. military. Subsequently, in the following month, the U.S. military dropped two atomic explosives on Japan. On August 6, 1945, the most powerful weapon in the world was unleashed on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, resulting in the demise of 140,000 people, many of whom were vaporized. Thousands more suffered and perished in the subsequent months and years due to radiation poisoning. Three days later, another explosive fell on Nagasaki, causing the demise of 74,000 people and equally devastating effects. As a consequence, Japan surrendered six days later, abruptly ending World War II. Initially, Oppenheimer expressed feelings of guilt over his creation, believing it exposed the inhumanity and evil of modern conflict. He saw the physicists involved in developing the explosive as having a sense of sin, an awareness that could never be erased. A decade later, Oppenheimer seemed to shift responsibility away from himself, attributing it to the state and governments. Stating that scientists should not bear the weight of how the changes they brought about were used. Post-battle, he became a crucial advisor on U.S. atomic policy and led the principal advisory committee of the Atomic Energy Commission, the successor to the Manhattan Project. He even had an office in the president's executive office, near the White House. However, in December 1953, President Dwight Eisenhower ordered that a blank wall be placed between Dr. Oppenheimer and any secret data due to suspicions that he might be a communist spy. Oppenheimer denied any deep interest in politics and economics, but he had connections with left-leaning groups during the 1930s and 1940s, particularly through his association with Gene Tatlock. Oppenheimer and Tatlock had a passionate relationship and were together for several years, with Oppenheimer providing support to left-wing causes. They eventually parted ways, and Oppenheimer married Kitty Puning in 1940. 
Despite Oppenheimer's communist affiliations being known, he was still appointed to lead the Manhattan Project. And his security clearance was not revoked by the FBI during their investigation in 1944. However, with the onset of the Cold Conflict, Oppenheimer faced renewed scrutiny, leading to restrictions on his access to classified information. In 1949, the Soviet Union successfully conducted its first atomic test, surpassing America's estimates. Suspicion arose within the U.S. government regarding J. Robert Oppenheimer. William Liscomb Borden, executive director of the United States Congress Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, sent a letter to FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover suggesting that Oppenheimer might be an agent of the Soviet Union. However, Borden failed to provide solid evidence to support his claim. In 1954, Oppenheimer faced a closed-door hearing before a tribunal of the Atomic Energy Commission to address his communist affiliations. He asserted that he had not been radicalized by his previous associations and that his left-leaning friends provided him with companionship but nothing more. He denied ever being a member of the Communist Party. Despite his defense, the tribunal, led by Strauss, voted 2-1 to one to strip Oppenheimer of his security clearance. Oppenheimer's scientific peers were outraged by the decision, and even Albert Einstein commented humorously on the situation. However, Hungarian physicist Edward Teller, who resented Oppenheimer's opposition to working on the hydrogen explosive, was pleased with the outcome. Oppenheimer had opposed the development of the hydrogen explosive when President Truman approached the commission about it in 1949, which caused tension with Teller. The US went ahead with the thermoatomic weapons development. And during the hearing, Teller testified against Oppenheimer, expressing his preference for other individuals to handle public matters. With his security clearance revoked, Oppenheimer settled in Princeton, New Jersey, where he continued to run the Institute for Advanced Study, a research facility for postdoctoral fellows. After living a quiet life, J. Robert Oppenheimer received an invitation from President John F. Kennedy to attend the White House dinner for Nobel Prize winners in 1962. Despite being nominated for the Nobel Prize in Physics three times, Oppenheimer never received the prestigious award himself. When the Kennedy administration offered him the opportunity for a new trial to potentially regain his security clearance, he turned it down. Signs of the government's changing attitude towards him became evident in 1963 when President Johnson bestowed upon Oppenheimer one of the highest scientific honors given by a president. The Fermi Award, accompanied by a tax-free sum of $50,000. In response to the recognition, Oppenheimer expressed his gratitude, acknowledging the possibility that it required both charity and courage for the president to make such an award. In 1965, Oppenheimer received a diagnosis of throat cancer, likely a consequence of his lifelong habit of heavy smoking. On February 18, 1967, at the age of 62, Oppenheimer passed away at his residence in Princeton. Down, down, see, oh, 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 way down. Mm -hmm.